Welcome in my fellow fitness enthusiasts to today's fitness challenge slash instructional video. Got a great workout coming to you guys from Revision Training LLC. Stick around for this one. If you're an elite athlete, this workout is going to rock your world. If you are a beginner or an intermediate, don't worry about it. We got some modifications, some really cool stuff that we're gonna show you. So be sure to stick around through the duration of this video. Today we're going through dumbbell work. I'm gonna teach you guys a little bit about what dumbbells, free weights are all about, why they're so helpful. And like I said, gonna give you a very good workout that you can mix in. So what you'll need for today, uh, a rack, a set of dumbbells of some sort, um, whether you have a full assortment of dumbbells or if you just have a handful, you can modify these exercises and a flat bench, something that you can step on, something that you can lay on. Uh, doesn't have to be real fancy, but if you've got some type of free moving flat bench, that's gonna be necessary for today as well. So my name is Tyler Marin. I am owner of Revision Training LLC. I'm a three-time Paralympic athlete in the sport of goalball, a personal trainer, motivational speaker, and overall fitness enthusiast. My mission, the mission of Revision Training LLC is to bring fitness to you guys. So whether you're sighted or visually impaired, doesn't matter, we're gonna make it accessible for you. So if this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, I welcome you in. If you've got full vision, you should be able to see everything I'm doing on camera here. If you're visually impaired, no stress, no worry. I'm gonna describe everything that I'm doing in great detail, but be sure to like and comment, thumbs up, share this video. Um, let me know how my descriptions are. If you missed something, let me know. Comment on the video, I will definitely get you more information because I'm all about bringing fitness to you guys. So let's talk today about dumbbells. Why are they so important? What are some of the benefits, the pros and cons of using this type of equipment, okay? So dumbbells are, very simply put, some amazing equipment. <laughs> and some of the reasons that they're so amazing is number one, they're extremely versatile. You can get dumbbells anywhere from a pound to two pounds, all the way up to 150 pounds, right? So a lot of variations that you can get. Most fitness centers, most average fitness centers, you're gonna find anywhere from five up to 50, sometimes 75 or 100 pound dumbbells. Uh, they usually go in increments of five pounds. The really smaller ones can go in increments of two and a half pounds. So you can get five, seven and a half, 10, 12 and a half, um, depending on how fancy schmancy your fitness center is. Um, some of the advantages to using dumbbells. So when I have a dumbbell in each hand, Right, if I'm gonna do, let's say, a bicep curl, for example, so I'm standing up totally straight, head is up super high, shoulders are back, belly pulled in, feet hip width, my body is straight. I'm turning my palms facing towards 12 o'clock, so everything's facing towards you guys right now. My elbows are down at my side. I'm gripping the weight right in the middle. I'm going to just bend my elbows and I'm gonna lift the weight up to my shoulders. Okay, so my elbows stay in one place. I'm just bending my elbows. At the top, my knuckles point up towards the ceiling, and then I straighten my arms again, my knuckles point towards the floor at the bottom. So this is a standard bicep curl. Now, if I'm curling 10 pounds in my right hand and 10 pounds in my left hand, I have 10 pounds in each hand, right? Pretty obvious. The thing is, though, if I was doing this with a machine or even with a barbell, it is possible for me if I'm right-handed or left-handed, I'm a little stronger on one side, to grab that bar or that machine and pull just a little bit more with one side, with my more dominant side. When you have dumbbells though, you have 10 pounds in each hand, period, and both arms doing equivalent amount of work. So one of the great advantages to dumbbells, you're doing equivalent work on both sides no matter what exercise you're doing. Also, the free movement aspect of them, I have nothing against machines. There's a great place in every fitness program for working with machines, but there's something very practical and, and useful about weights that you just pick up and move around under your own control, under your own stability. So, a bunch of great stuff that you can do with dumbbells. Couple of key notes. When we talk about dumbbells, and again, just to describe for those who are visually impaired, your typical dumbbell is going to be shaped like this. It's gonna have a weight at each end, Sometimes it's kind of a flat, round weight. Sometimes it's shaped more like a ball, depending on 
um, the, the style and method. And then it's always connected by a narrow bar, a handle. Typically that handle will have like, a, like bumps and grooves, make it easier to grip. Most of the time, the weights will have a tactile marking on them. So whether on the very end of the weight, you can feel the numbers imprinted on them. These are, are pretty well embossed. These are classic iron weights. So it's really easy to feel the numbers on them and they're, they're typically shown in pounds and kilograms. So depending on the weight system that you use. So pretty easy to use, pretty visually impaired friendly overall. And like I said, most fitness centers will have a whole complement of dumbbells. Real quick, let me talk to you about a flat bench and how useful these can be. Again, most fitness centers are gonna have these included. They're super great, there's so much you can do with them. Uh, most of the time what you're gonna find is either you have one solid piece, it's one padded rectangle essentially, but a lot of times, especially in your little bit higher end fitness centers, you're gonna find there's two sections. So here I've got kind of a smaller square pad. It's about 10 inches by 10 inches. And then there's another section of it. It's much bigger. It's a rectangular section. So it's probably 10 inches by 30, right? So the smaller section is where your bottom goes. And the bigger section, the rectangular section, that's where your back, shoulders, head will all go, okay? So think your bottom is a lot smaller. It sits in the smaller section. Um, this particular bench is adjustable, so I can take the top edge where my head would be and I can actually lift the padding up and this can click up into place so you can set it up so that it's at an angle. You can sit it all the way up so that you can do exercises while sitting straight up so you can almost turn it from a bench into a chair. So a few different things that are pretty useful about these. Uh, these also have wheels at the base. Most of the time you won't have to worry about that because you're in a fitness center and you don't need to be moving the bench around. But this at the seat end has a handle. You can actually lift, lift this up and then it's got some wheels that you can slide it on to move it back and forth. So if there's ever an opportunity for you to get one of these for your own house, pretty easy to move around. Um, so very, very simple setup. So what we're gonna do for today, I'm gonna talk you through one of my absolute favorite workouts. Okay, so let me explain real quick how this is gonna work. If you're somebody who's interested in toning up your body, this workout's gonna do it for you. If you're somebody who's interested in improving your cardiovascular fitness, this workout's gonna do it for you. If you're somebody that's interested in getting a full body workout in, arms and legs, everything in one shot, this workout's gonna do it for you. If you're somebody who doesn't have a lot of time, but you wanna get in a good workout, this workout's gonna do it for you. It covers just about everything. Very foundational, very functional. I love this workout. So stay with me, let's go through it. Here's how it's gonna work. You're gonna need to have one extra thing, a timer, okay? So using your phone, your stopwatch, whatever is comfortable for you. But very, very simply put, you start a timer at the beginning of this workout and then you just put it aside. You complete the entire workout and then stop the timer, okay? And we'll talk about that at the end. So that's just the timer piece. Start it at the beginning of the workout, stop it at the end. So this workout has eight exercises total. Four upper body and four lower body. We're gonna do it in a circuit, okay? So exercise one, then two, then three, then four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we go back through it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we do it a third time, three rounds, three circuits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Each exercise is set to be 12 repetitions, okay? Now here's the part where you can start to modify this a little bit. If you're an elite athlete, if you're somebody who's experienced with working out, I want you to get me all 12 reps. If you're a little bit new to the game, you wanna take a little bit of easier path, that's totally, totally fine. It's more appropriate for you. You can dial that down to eight or 10 reps whatever feels comfortable for you, okay? But for you guys who are a little bit better conditioned, you've been doing this for a while, give me full 12 reps for every exercise, all right? What are the exercises? Let's go ahead and get into it. We're gonna go upper body, lower body, upper body, lower body. We're gonna alternate. Exercise number one, we're gonna go a alternating dumbbell chest press. So I've got my dumbbells, just light dumbbells for now. I'm just demoing the exercise for you guys. I'm gonna be seated on the end of the bench, Okay. To get into this movement, it's really important. 
I'm sitting up nice and tall. My feet are flat on the floor, back is straight. I've got the weight kind of balanced on the end of my, my legs. So the weight's completely vertical right now. I'm gripping the weight exactly in the middle. That's another key thing with dumbbells. Make sure that you don't slide your hand to one side or the other. Grip the weight exactly in the middle so it's well balanced. Now I'm gonna lay back on the bench, but as I lay back, I'm gonna kind of pop my knees up just a little bit and bring the weight up over my chest, okay? So now, I'm laying on my back, my feet are flat, knees are bent, my, my buttocks, the back of my legs, my shoulders, head, everything is touching the bench. My knees are kind of open a little bit wider than the bench, so I got a nice stable base. The weight is directly over my chest, knuckles pointed towards the ceiling, elbows are almost completely straight. I don't have them like totally locked out, I just got like a little slight bend. One more key point with alternating dumbbell chest press, and this is true for bench press, dumbbell chest press, anything. I don't want the weight here over your eyes, okay? Not over your face. Bring it a little closer towards your feet. Keep it straight up over your chest. Straight up over your chest. Now, alternating dumbbell chest press. I'm gonna leave my left hand up in the air. I'm gonna bring my right hand down. I'm gonna bend my elbow. I'm gonna bring the weight slowly down to the outside of my rib, to the outside of my chest. My knuckles pointed towards the ceiling still. And then I'm gonna push it back up to the top. Now I'm gonna leave the right one up. I'm gonna bring the left down. Whole time my knuckles are pointed straight up towards the ceiling. Bring the weight down and push it up. So as you come down, the weight's gonna be just a little bit wider. You're like coming down to the outside of your ribs. But as you push it up, the weight's gonna be up over the middle of your chest. So if you looked from like standing at the head position of this bench, it would look like you're almost making like a triangle shape. So at the top, the weights are really close together. At the bottom, you're just a little bit wider. The weight's on the outside of your ribs, okay? So this whole time. Now, here's the count, right? So right hand down and up, one. Left hand down and up, one. Right hand down and up, two. Left hand down and up, two. So it's 12 reps on each hand, okay? You get to 12 reps, and then you can set the weight down towards your thighs and sit back up. Exercise number one. Exercise number two, I'm holding on to the weights. So pretty much every exercise, you're just gonna be holding on to these dumbbells through the whole thing. So that creates its own little challenge, it's kind of fun. Exercise number two, we're going to legs. We're gonna do a single leg bench step up, okay? So I'm holding onto the dumbbells at my sides. I'm not lifting them, bending my elbows, anything like that, just kind of letting the weight hang down at my side. I'm gonna put one foot up on the bench, okay? So my left foot is on the bench, my left knee is bent up in front of me, my right foot is flat on the floor, my right knee is straight. I'm just kind of standing on my right leg. Now I'm gonna push my left foot into the bench, and I'm gonna drive up and stand up on the bench, and then slowly lower my foot, my right foot back down to the floor. So this whole time, my left foot's gonna stay flat on the, full, on the bench, not gonna move it, drive up, stand up on the bench, step back down. Drive up, stand up on the bench, step back down. I'm just keeping my left foot on the bench, standing up and coming back down. Couple of key points. Again, my arms are just kinda hanging down at my side, holding on to the weight. My back is straight the whole time. As I step up, and I'm not leaning way forward and, and trying to drive up that way, I'm standing up tall and I'm pushing my head straight up towards the ceiling, okay? And back down, chest out, head up the whole time. Also, not allowing my knee to drop in towards the middle of my body. My front knee is over top of my ankle the whole time. If I drive up and that knee collapses in towards the midline of my body, I'm gonna put a big twist in the knee. We're not trying to do that. Keep that front knee directly over top of your ankle. 12 and then switch to the other leg, okay? 12. Now immediately from there, that's exercise number two. We're going to number three, back to the upper body. Here's how this one's gonna work. This is called a single arm dumbbell row, okay? I'm standing at the side of the bench. I've got my left foot flat on the floor. I've got my right knee, my right shin, and the top of my right foot on the bench. So I'm kind of kneeling on the bench. I'm gonna lean forward so my chest, my belly, my eyes are pointed towards the floor. I'm gonna put my right hand on the bench and my left hand, my left arm is hanging down towards the ground, holding onto the dumbbell. Okay, so again, 
Left foot on the floor, left leg is straight. Right hand, right knee on the bench. And my left hand is holding the weight, just kind of hanging down uh, from my shoulder. Single arm dumbbell row. I'm just gonna pull my elbow up, bring the weight up to my ribs, on the outside of my ribs, and then lower it back down slowly. Pull it up and bring it down. Pull it up, bring it down. So I'm working the muscles in my biceps, forearms, and the back of my shoulder. Key point here, when you lean forward, we're not trying to round your back like a cat, okay? We're trying to flatten your back like a table, okay? If I lean forward and put my hand on this bench, and somebody came over and put a dinner plate on my back or put a glass of water on my back, it shouldn't spill. It's nice and flat, okay? But if you're rounding your back, pushing your back up towards the ceiling like a cat would, then you're gonna cause trouble in your spine. Keep your back nice and flat, squeeze your belly in super tight. 12 on each side, that's our upper body movement, okay? Now, we've got legs again, exercise number four. If you guys are taking notes, keeping up with me, you can always watch the video again, no problem. We're going to a forward lunge, okay? Holding onto the dumbbells again. So just like I was doing with the single leg bench step up, all I'm doing is holding the dumbbells at my side, okay? So a proper lunge, we're gonna step out, big step forward, large step forward. Why? Because we wanna make sure that front knee stays right over top of the front ankle, okay? Big step forward, bring your back knee towards the floor, and then you're gonna drive back up on that front leg to your start position. Now let me describe this. I'm gonna take a big step out with my right foot. I'm gonna pause at the bottom here just for a second so I can describe to you my positioning. Front foot is flat on the floor. My front knee directly over top of my ankle, okay? If you take too short of a step, your front knee is gonna be way out over your toe, and that puts a lot of pressure in your knee. Big step out so that your shin, your front shin is vertical to the floor, and your front knee is directly over top of your ankle. Your head is over your shoulders, shoulders over your hips, hips over your back knee, okay? So my back knee right now is resting on the floor. When you do the lunge, I want you to just hover over the floor and then push back up. But my knee is directly underneath my hips, both knees are bent to 90 degrees. My back foot, my toe is just touching the ground, so my whole back foot comes up off the floor. You're not trying to keep your back foot flat. So this is your lunge position. And then you drive your front foot into the floor to push back up to your starting position. Big step out, lower your knee down just before it touches the floor and push back up. Big step out, lower your knee down, push back up. The whole time, your head, your shoulders, your back, everything stays directly up straight. You're not trying to step out and lean way forward over your chest, over your knee, chest up, okay? Push your chest up. Now this one, I like to go right, left, right, left, just like you would with the alternating uh, dumbbell bench press, chest press, but it's up to you. You can do 12 on one leg and then 12 on the other, okay? Exercise number five, coming up. <clears throat> so, alternating dumbbell shoulder press. You can do this exercise standing, sitting, or kneeling. Doesn't really matter. Engages the core just a little different uh, depending on where you're, where you're going with it, but in the end, doesn't really matter. Here's how we do it. Holding the weights at your shoulder, okay? So I've got my elbows bent. I'm sitting right now, feet flat on the floor, knees are bent, back straight, head up. I've got my elbows bent by my ribs. I've got the weight at my shoulders, palms facing straight ahead towards you guys, knuckles pointed up towards the ceiling, okay? Now from here, I'm gonna push one arm straight up in the air and bring it back down. Then push the other arm straight up in the air, bring it back down. Other arm straight up, back down. So one, the weight stays at my shoulder, stays at the starting position while the other gets pushed up and back down, and then you alternate back and forth. Now here's something too, I'm gonna to turn sideways so those of you can see it and catch this. Let me describe this for you guys. If I was holding on to a bar instead of free weights, I don't wanna have it directly by my ears because as I push up and down, I'm just gonna hit myself in the head. You have to have the weight out in front of you while doing this exercise, but not way out. I'm not talking like way away from your body. What I'm talking about is as my elbows are bent, and my fists are um, over top of my elbows, right? 
I'm not trying to bring my elbow and my fist back here by my ear. I'm trying to have it slightly in front of my body so that my elbow, my wrist, my knuckles are all vertical, but they're in front of my face just slightly. So it's not weight back here by your ears pushing straight up overhead. Bring them out in front of your body just an inch or two so that if it was a bar, if it was connected, it would just kind of glide in front of your face as you push up overhead, alternating the weights. Now again, you can do the same thing standing up, pushing up overhead, here we go. Pushing up overhead, or you can come down to one knee and do the same thing. So this is just gonna engage your core and your back just a little bit differently. Either way is comfortable, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. In the kneeling position, I've got one foot flat on the floor, one, one knee up, one knee down, and you can alternate those, okay? Exercise number six, we're almost there, guys. Lateral lunge, okay? So again, <laughs> Just holding the weight at your side. We're not picking it up, not raising it up overhead. The weight just hangs there. It's just there to make the exercise more challenging for us. Standing up super tall, I'm gonna take, instead of a big step forward like I did for the forward lunge, I'm gonna go to the side. We're doing a lateral lunge. So I'm gonna take a big step to my left, okay? Now, the step, uh, the foot that you step with, you wanna turn that toe open just slightly. So instead of my left foot pointing straight ahead to 12 o'clock, I'm gonna turn it open just a little bit so it points to like 10 o'clock. Your hips come back as you squat down and then you drive back up to your starting position, okay? The foot that you don't move stays straight the whole time. That foot stays flat, that knee stays straight. Take a big step to my right, my toe turns out just slightly. The weight kind of hangs down uh, one kind of at the midline of my body, the other on the outside of the knee that I lunged with, trying to keep your head up, your back straight, and then you push back up to your starting position. This is a glute and hip exercise. So as you lunge, you wanna step out and you wanna squeeze your glutes and drive back up with your buttocks in the back of your legs, okay? Big step out, keep your chest forward, head up as you lunge from side to side. And again, this one you can go right, left, right, left. Just give me all the repetitions that you're planning on doing. Two more exercises, okay? Now this next one, if you have access to a pull-up bar or you have a lat pull-down or some bands, if you can do that pull-down movement or pull-up movement, totally fine, that's really acceptable, that's what I do. I'll set the dumbbells down, I'll go over to the pull-up bar and get some pull-ups in. If you're not able to do that, Here's an exercise that's a little tricky, but very effective if you can get it correct. Okay, so let me walk you through this. This is called a single, um, it's called a dumbbell pullover. We're only gonna use one dumbbell for this one, okay? And here's how we're gonna set up. I'm sitting on the seat at the end of the bench. I'm holding the dumbbell vertically uh, between my palms. I'm gonna lay back on the bench. So again, feet are flat, okay? Back is flat, looking up towards the ceiling. I'm going to cup my hands underneath one of the ends of the dumbbell so it's hanging vertically, right? So my, my palms are kind of cupped and pointed up towards the ceiling and the weight's like hanging down between my hands. My elbows are about 90% extended. I've got like definitely a bend in my elbows. They're not totally straight, but I'm not bending them halfway either. They're just about 90% extension. Now from here, what I'm gonna do, <clears throat> I'm going to push the dumbbell, instead of having it over my chest, bring it up over my chin, my nose, my eyes, up over my head, over the end of the bench. I'm gonna reach the dumbbell down towards the floor over my head and then I'm gonna pull it back up over my chest. Reach over my head again, reach the dumbbell towards the floor over my head, and pull it back over my chest. So this whole movement is all in the shoulders. My elbows are essentially staying just slightly bent through the whole thing. They might bend just a little bit more at the bottom, but it's not an elbow movement. You're working a little bit in the triceps with this, but it's not an elbow movement. This is for your lats and the back of your shoulders as you reach over your head and then pull up over your chest, 
Okay. So be super careful with this one. This is uh, a little tricky, especially if you've got tight shoulders. You wanna make sure that you're getting a good range of motion and of course staying super safe, holding on to that weight. But that's a great way to target your lats if you don't have anything to pull yourself up on or you don't have the strength to do that as of yet, okay? Last exercise here, guys. Goblet squats. So standard squat, feet hip width, toes pointed straight ahead, back is straight, head is up. You push your hips back first to initiate that movement. All the weight goes into your heels. You sit your hips down into a little chair and then you drive back up, straight up, okay? We're not leaning forward, you're keeping your chest forward the whole time. Now, a goblet squat, we're gonna take one dumbbell, and again, we're gonna hold it vertically. So instead of grabbing the handle in the middle, you're gonna turn it so it points up and down, and you're gonna grab one end of the weight, whether it's a ball or whether it's more of like a round plate. You're gonna press it between your palms so that your fingers point up, your thumbs are pointed towards you, your elbows are at your side. You're gonna press it between your palms and then kind of wrap your fingers around it. Try not to get your wrists bent back too far. Try not to tuck your wrists under it too far. Try to just keep your wrists straight and press it between your palms as hard as you can to hold it up. Okay, so this keeps your wrists from overextending. Now a goblet squat with press, here's how we're gonna do it. Squat yourself down into that little chair, sit down and back, and then as you stand up, you're gonna press the weight up over your head. Then lower it back down to your chest. Sit down in that little chair, and then stand up and press the weight up over your head. Now as you do this, you're using your legs to make this movement happen. It's not squat down, stand up, and now that I'm standing, I'm gonna push the weight up over my head. It's squat, and as you drive up with your legs, use the legs to push that weight up over your head. Goblet squat. This is a precursor to a lot of power movements that we can get to in the future for those of you who are ready to do that kind of movement, okay? Eight exercises, three rounds. Start the timer at the beginning, stop the timer at the end. Here's what's gonna happen. Number one, let's say you did this whole workout, you did your full three rounds, you got 12 reps per exercise, you used um, the 15s, the 25s, and the 45 pound dumbbells, you used them appropriately, right? When you're pushing up overhead and your shoulder press, you're gonna use lighter weight than when you're doing your row typically. So feel the weight, make sure it makes sense to you, right? But write all that information down and write down the time that it took you to do the workout, right? You should be pretty exhausted by the end. But let's say it took you 37 minutes and 26 seconds. Now the next time you have a couple of choices. You can keep all the exact same weights. You can keep all the exact same number of repetitions, but you can say, I'm gonna try to do this workout faster. I'm gonna try to shave some time off this workout. That's gonna improve your cardiovascular system. Or you can say, you know what, I'm gonna try to maintain that time, but I'm gonna grab a little heavier weight this time. That's another way you can improve the workout. So there's different ways that you can do this, and this workout's gonna go very fast. It's gonna get everything that you need, okay? So I hope you guys follow this. I hope this workout challenges you like it does for me. I enjoy this one very thoroughly. So comment, like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share it with people because I think that there are a lot of people out there who need to know this kind of information. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope this helps you to become a better athlete. From Revision Training, let's change the way we look at it. You guys make it a strong day.